Okay, lesson 5A. Last lesson. Absolute value functions. Yes, it's graphing, I know. I know you're going to complain about the fact that it's graphing. However, it's not bad graphing. Okay, this is easier graph. Lesson 5A. Bad graphing is bad graphing. It's non existent. Did you rip it off? I guess. Do the rest of you guys have 5A? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So Robbie should have 5A. There for a moment I got panicked. I thought, oh no. I just copied again. No, I think every yes. single time. Yes, I did. No, no I said yes. Got the corner of it. You got the corner of it? Well, here. There's a new 5A. Okay, so we are graphing absolute value functions. We also have step functions to talk about at the end, but most of our lesson is graphing these absolute value functions. Here's the deal, guys. It's a V-shaped graph. It either looks like this and opens up, or it looks like this and opens down. Okay, no left or right business, just up, right side up V, or an upside down V. And it's based on the graph Y equals absolute value of X. Now, we need a, the parent function is what I want to look at here. I want to look at the basic graph because then all we're going to do is we're going to move these graphs around. We might shift it left. We might shift it up, down, or right. Okay? If you don't know what a graph looks like, what do I usually have you make? T-chart? Yeah. T-chart. I call an XY chart. What are values we like to use? Okay, 0, 1, 2, and I'm going to force you to throw in some Negative. negatives. We have to have some negatives on this one or it won't look right. So I'm going to say negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. If you only use positives, you're going to end up with a straight line instead of a V. Okay, so we need a V-shaped graph. Now, what do these absolute value bars do to whatever's inside of it? They make it positive. So if it's negative, it turns it to positive. If it's already positive, it stays positive. Okay? And the calculator won't do the sports, so we have to know what those absolute value bars do. They make the number positive. So, negative 2. What is the absolute value of negative 2? Two? Two. Negative 2. Oh, 2. 2. Make it positive. Negative 1. What is the absolute value of negative 1? 1. 1, because that's the positive version. What's the absolute value of 0? Zero? Zero. zero. Stays 0. What's the absolute value of 1? One? 1. The positive version of 1 is um, still 1. Absolute value of 2? 2. Okay, that's our basic set of ordered pairs. So let's graph these. Basically, okay, negative 2, 2 says to go left 2, up 2. Negative 1, 1. Left 1, up 1. 0, 0. 1, 1 says to go Right one up one, and two two says to go right two, two. right two up two. This is our basic graph. We're going to use it all throughout the lesson. Okay? I like to think of this graph basically, it's a V that is centered at zero, zero, and then what's each side of the V do? It goes over one up one, over one up one, over one up one, right? That's what our V does. So let me draw my V in here. So you're going to have a bunch of graphs by the time we get done today that look like these. Okay? Let's just say, give this graph. 
I know graphing's not her favorite, but this graphing's not bad. Usually students like this graphing. Now, our focus today is translations. And so when I talk about translations, I'm talking about taking a graph and moving it horizontally, so left or right, or vertically, so up or down. We're just translating. We're not going to change the size or shape of the graph. It's going to be the same exact V every time, just moved to a different location. Now we're going to start with vertical. And here's what's important to notice. A vertical translation, we know it's a vertical translation if the plus or minus K is outside the absolute value. So if it says plus a number outside of the absolute value, we're going to go up that many values. If it says minus a number after the absolute value, we're going to go down that many units. And actually, I'm going to switch over to my next page. I was supposed to be over here. So a plus K tells my graph to go up. Minus a number tells my graph to go down. Okay, guys. Y equals absolute value of X plus 3. What's that plus 3 tell me to do? Go up 3. Because this plus 3 is outside the absolute value, my graph is going to move up 3. Now, let me ask you a question. What were my original dots? If you go back up to the top right graph, what were my original dots? They were at 0, 0, right? And then from 0, 0, where did they go? Yeah. Over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, or up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, right? I guess I should say up 1, over 1, technically, for slope purposes. So basically, you know, it's just doing 1. Now, our graph, we're going to take that graph right there that I just put those dots in for. Those aren't my final answer. And I'm going to take those dot, those points and move them where? Up three boxes. Now, here's the easy way to do it, in my opinion. Take that point of the V and move it first. So the point that's currently at 0, 0, where am I going to take it? Up three. Up three. One, two, three. Rather than count up three on each of the dots, I have my new point of my V. What can I do from that point of the V? Up one over one, up one over one. Are you seeing my building here? Okay. So from this new point, I can go up one over one, up one over one. I can go the other direction. Up one over one, up one over one. And that V there in purple is my new V. Really? Can't tell the difference in those? Or actually, it's more like a gray, but... I can tell. Well, the purple one I connected, how's that? Yeah. Okay. That's all you're doing. Now, to be honest, when we go to do these others, I'm not even going to put my original dots in there, because I don't think you need them. I honestly think they're probably going to be more confusing than anything. It's all about moving the point of the V, the vertex, where it needs to go, and then the rest of V is up one over one, up one over one. Questions there? We've done a lot worse with graphing, so. You don't like this? I think the minus still like math at all. I mean, well, I you can't hold that against this lesson. Yes, that's why Okay. Well, let's look at the next one. Y equals absolute value of X minus 4. Okay. There's a minus 4 after the absolute value. So that's going to tell me to take my graph down 4. 
And what's going to be the shape of this graph? It's a V, right? Because it's absolute value, that right there tells me it's going to be a V. So, where does my V normally start at? Zero, zero. zero, zero. But what am I going to do with that point of the V? Go down four. So Count down four units. And this one's not going to be with the down um, yes, ours today we stay very basic and they're all right side up these. I got that done already, like this one. And then you said, like, I started thinking about maybe the negative would change it where it's like this. These pluses and minuses we're going to see today just tell us which direction to move it. But yeah, no, we don't have any that flip upside down. So, that would require a negative in front of your absolute value, which you won't see today. Okay, so I took my zero, zero, dot, I moved it down four units. What do I do from this new point? What did you already do? We moved this down four, and then from, how do I make the rest of my V? Up one over one, up one over one. Up one, over one. Up one, over one. On the other side, up one, over one, up one, over one. Okay. Did you hear that? Possibly. Uh, now the else video is going to hear everyone giggling, and that's going to be the dead giveaway. So. Okay. Now, hear me out. These were vertical. These were up or down, and I know they were up or down because my number is outside of the absolute value. Look at the next section. Next section says horizontal. What's horizontal mean? Left or right, like the horizon is horizontal, left or right. Now, you have to be careful here. Here's the tricky one. A plus H, first of all, notice they're in the absolute value. So if your number is in the absolute value, that's going to mean left or right. And then I preach this. We do this a lot, a lot, a lot, all throughout the year in Algebra 2 with different graphs. And what, I'm at, what I always say, okay, so notice, plus H, which way is it going to go? Left. left. I don't know about you guys, but I would have expected right. So here's the deal. That's what I thought. Okay. You have to think opposite the sign. When it's in the absolute value, it's left or right opposite the sign. So if it says plus a number, we're going to go left. If it says minus a number, we're going to go right. It's just still the same thing, though. I'm going to take that point of the V, move it left or right, and then... Do the rest of my feet. Usually, usually it doesn't involve like this. Yes, it, it does. We hear it every day. We hear it, yeah, we hear it. it needs to be silenced. Okay, guys. Y equals absolute value of x minus 2. Single right. Single mm -hmm. down. Yeah. That? You can't change it. I just told you yes, and now you're changing your answer. No, I said go down. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. No, right. You said right, and I said yes, and then you changed it to down. Okay, here's the deal. Where is this minus 2? It's inside the absolute value, correct? Yes. So that means I'm going left or right. right. When it's inside the absolute value, opposite the direction of the sign. So a minus 2 tells me to go right 2. Do we know our left from our right? Uh, no. I don't know, left and right? Okay, so here's my left, so I need to go right, right to. So from the center, my V normally starts at 0, 0, but I'm going to move that point right to. What do I do from that point? See, you guys are catching on. Up one over one. Up one over one. 
up one over one the other way now. In math Excel, it's more multiple choice. So it's you picking which way did the V go. So that makes it a little bit easier, right? Yeah. Math Excel. Yeah, you don't have to actually graph these in Math Excel. That's a choice. Okay. Y equals absolute value of X plus 3. Where is the plus 3? Oh, left. I agree. It's going to be left. Don't change your answer this time. Okay. Plus 3, it's in the absolute value. So that's left or right, opposite the sign, which tells me left 3. So instead of starting at 0, 0, I'm going to count. Left 3. I'm going to ask it every time. What do I do from that point? I go up one up one. Up one over one, up one over one. Now, since you guys know I let you use notes on the test, and if you go to do these graphs and you don't have these on your graphs, I'm going to be frustrated that you didn't really look at your notes. Just saying. Okay? You just have to get which way to move it. That's the, that, if you're going to... If you want to know, okay, what's the hard part of this stuff? It's getting straight which way to move. Okay. Yes. Talk later. Ask me at the end after I finish the notes. Okay. Yes. Hold on. I say, let, let me try and get through this one last thing, okay? One last thing. Now, this is something we don't cover as much. And it's called a step function. Okay? A step function is a function that pairs every number in an interval with a single value. The graph can look like steps to a staircase. Thus, it's called a step function because it's going to look like stair steps. Now, we're going to practice. We're going to make a graph that models the relationship between the number of students X that go to the game by bus and the number of buses Y that are needed if each bus holds a maximum of 50 students. 50 students. Okay. Now, we know where X and Y are on the axis, yes? Mm. Now, it says that X is what? Uh, okay. Number of students. So I'm going to label my X axis number of students okay and y my y axis is going to be number of buses Now, okay, number of buses. I'm going to put zero down here. And then I'm going to label each line. One, two, three, four, five. I don't even know that we'll be able to get that high. We won't. Now, what about the bottom? Number of students. What kind of increments should I label number of students? 50. We're going to count by 50s, aren't we? Now, I will tell you, I'm going to do every other line as 50 so my graph isn't too small. So I'm going to, okay, we have zero. Skip a line, 50. Skip a line, what comes after 50? 100. 100. Skip a line, what comes after 100? No? 150. We're counting by 50s. 50, 100, 150. Don't worry about it. Now, here's what I want you to think. If there is one bus, how many students could go? 
So if there's one bus, that'd be anywhere from zero to 50 students, correct? Because does it have to be 50? No. It could be one student for all we know. I agree. And actually, you know what? I shouldn't say zero to 50. I should say one to 50. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now, when would we need two buses? More than 50 to 100. Not 50. 51 to 100. 51 to 100, right? Yeah. When would I need three buses? 101 to 100. Okay, and I think that's about all I'll be able to fit on my graph. But I'm just trying to get you thinking here. Now, to graph this, we need from 0 to 50 students, right here, yes? We need one bus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in my graph on the one line from 0 to 50. Now, at the 1 or at the 0, I left the dot open. At 50, I'm going to fill it in because could we have exactly 50 students? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, what happens at 50? It goes. We're going to have to jump. Up. After 50, we're going to jump up to 2. two. two. I'm going to put an open dot there. And I'm putting an open dot because 50 is technically down here at bus 1, isn't it? And then we're going to go <coughs> over to 100. And at 100, I'm going to put a closed close dot. Are you seeing what's going on here? And then, open. what happens at 100? We have to jump up to bus number 3. And we're going to go from 100 to 150 is going to be three buses. The, dot, the first dot is open because it was 100 was down at 2. And then the second dot is closed. Okay? That's the idea of what a step function looks like. Because anything from 0 to 50 students is on one bus. Anything from 50 to 100 is on two buses, on the two total buses, right? Okay, you've got homework to work on. Okay, so your homework, of course, is lesson 5.8 in Math Excel. Have a good night, Robbie.